Hello everyone, Nicholson here, and welcome to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. This is a show where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday we talk about all the big daily movie news and then go over what it means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer announcements, director announcements, things like that. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's Hot Topics. So our first topic that we have to talk about today, Roberto Orsi actually just came out and did a couple of interviews. Um, and in those interviews, he discussed the status of the upcoming Amazing Spider-Man franchise, their universe that they're creating. Because they're trying to create a shared universe, much like what Marvel has done and what DC is doing, which is creating all of these unique uh, and individual characters which will fit within the same universe. That uh, Things that happen in one movie will uh, have ramifications for the other movies and, and things like that. Very much how Marvel's, uh, Marvel's choice has been so far. So... Uh, Sony got way ahead of the game well before Amazing Spider-Man 2 came out and announced dates for The Amazing Spider-Man 3, which was going to be in June of 2016, and then May of 2018 was going to be Amazing Spider-Man 4, and they also announced a Venom spin-off film and a Sinister Six spin-off film. They felt very confident about what they had with Amazing Spider-Man 2. Well, then Amazing Spider-Man 2 came out. Roberto Orsi and his uh, former writing partner uh, Alex Kurtzman were both two of the screenwriters on Amazing Spider-Man 2. They were expected to come back for Amazing Spider-Man 3 and uh, Alex Kurtzman is actually writing and directing the Venom spin-off film. Well, um, Roberto Orsi actually came out and said he's now no longer a part of Amazing Spider-Man 3 or any more of the Spider-Man films. Um, one of the main reasons for that, it hasn't, it, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the quality uh, or the fin of the finished product of Amazing Spider-Man 2. A lot of it has to deal with the fact that Roberto Orsi is now going to be spearheading uh, Star Trek 3. So he's uh, co-writing and directing Star Trek 3. Now Star Trek 3 has not even been given a green light yet and he hasn't been given the official green light as the director until the script comes in and Paramount says, yes, we like it, go ahead and do it. That's, that's when Star Trek 3 will be officially happening. They are planning on it to be a 2016 release to coincide with the 50 year anniversary of the original series. but. That is all contingent on the script. If the script comes in and they like it, they'll move ahead with it. But um, Sony came out a while ago and stated that, or I, actually I don't think it was Sony specifically, it was either Mark Webb or Avi Arad, um, who's the producer, he's been a producer on all the Spider-Man films. Um, and he came out and said that 2018 was not going to be Amazing Spider-Man 4. They're still holding the date, but it's not going to be Amazing Spider-Man 4. Now I've talked about this on a previous show, but... With Amazing Spider-Man 3 set to start, hopefully start filming by the end of this year, and then release in summer of 2016, that doesn't look like it's going to be the case anymore. And even Roberto Orsi himself is unsure of Sony's timeline for how they want to release these films. Um, as far as I'm aware, and as far as the, the article was quoted as saying, um, they are still keeping both their 2016 and 2018 release dates. I would be shocked if Sinister Six was not the next film that comes out because they they started to set that up in Amazing Spider-Man 2 the the inclusion of the Sinister Six and even those little frames uh, during the the credit sequence were introducing us to the potential lineup of the Sinister Six and having having Sinister Six start and and get us to know these characters and then having them go into an Amazing Spider-Man 3 I think that would be potentially the smartest decision that they could do. Now, having the benefit of hindsight and looking back and saying, okay, Amazing Spider-Man 2 looked to have too many cooks in the kitchen. There were too many issues with it in terms of story, in terms of what the studio wanted to be in there versus what Mark Webb and the screenwriters wanted to be in there. There was just a, uh, you could tell there were too many people involved in crafting that film. Uh, too many people with input. Well, I, like I said, I would be shocked if Sinister Six did not take the 2016 release date. And the main reason for my speculation on that is because Drew Goddard, who was writing and directing the Sinister Six movie, had to pull out of Marvel's Daredevil series. At the time, people assumed because it came out like the next day after Edgar Wright left, people thought that, okay, well, they're not allowing him to express his full artistic vision. And that wasn't the case. This was, it did come out that it was um, his duties with the Spider-Man franchise and with, and with uh, Venom that he, or sorry, not Venom, Sinister Six, that he would not be able to contribute as the showrunner to uh, Daredevil. So with them coming out and, and having him now full steam ahead on Sinister Six, that makes a lot of sense, considering the fact that they don't even have an idea 
for what they want Amazing Spider-Man 3 to be yet. That to me is surprising because they announced dates for it. And they gave it two year increments, which a lot of time it takes about, with pre-production and scripting and everything like that, it takes about six to eight months to fully craft together an actual project. Uh, especially one of the scope and size because they they will have their initial script and then the studio will have someone else come in and they'll touch it up and then they'll have someone else come in and touch that up and then someone else come in and then they might have somebody during the production say hey this would be cool if we did this or we could put this in here to set up another character in a future film or something of that sort and that's when you get too many cooks in the kitchen um, we do know for a fact that Andrew Garfield and Mark Webb are confirmed to come back for Amazing Spider-Man 3. When that movie comes out is another question. But the bigger question on top of that is Andrew Garfield has stated that he's not keen, not he didn't say no, but he's not keen on coming back to do another Spider-Man after the third one. He's contractually obligated to appear in a third one, but he doesn't know if he's going to do the fourth one. At that point, it begs the question, does Sony continue on creating this shared universe that they're wanting to create? and just recast the role or do they do another reboot at that time and try to create a new version of Spider-Man because this Spider-Man that we are getting now is different than the Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans although I, I saw a lot more similarities in Amazing Spider-Man 2 to the Tobey Maguire Sam Raimi Spider-Man films than I did in The Amazing Spider-Man and I thought that was a real shame because I really liked the direction that they were going with Amazing Spider-Man a much more realistic take while still bringing in the fantastical and that's what a lot of these companies I think need to start remembering is you can still have a grounded reality ba a reality based storyline with your superhero films but keep the fantastical you can keep that spectacle in there don't go full Dark Knight series do not you don't need to do that that world was the only reason why Christopher Nolan ever attempted to do a Batman film was because he could bring him into the real world 100%. And the reason that that worked was also because Batman was not a character that has superpowers. He existed in the real world in a sense. It was all gadgetry, it was it was money, it was training, it was martial arts, it was all these things. And even the villains, they made them seem real. I, I still feel, uh, feel that Bane was the biggest stretch. Uh, Joker, they nail. Oh my god, they did Joker perfectly. I don't know how they're going to do that again. They're going to have to do a completely different take on the Joker. I'm getting off topic here. But the, the, the fact remains is that if you were to, to do an Amazing Spider-Man 3, my personal opinion would be A, um, I completely share uh, the sentiments of AMC Movie Talk where they talk about how it should not even have a love interest. This should be, they should maybe have Mary Jane in there as a very small supporting character but have the ramifications spoiler alert by the way have the ramifications of what happened in Amazing Spider-Man 2 to Gwen Stacy to really affect Peter Parker and have that be one of the main storylines of this next one while still having to keep his mantle of Spider-Man I know they already kind of dealt with that at the end of Amazing Spider-Man 2 but still and that was a mistake by the way they they went way too far uh, in Amazing Spider-Man 2 in terms of not having a a created story, a, a beginning, middle, and end. You can still have that and still implement certain little Easter eggs and, and gizmos for the future films, but have a self-contained story, and they did not do that. Even the very ending of this film is not the ending of this film. The ending of the story is about 20 minutes before the end of the movie. Like it, There was just too much. But the fact remains is that Andrew Garfield and Mark Webb are only coming back for number three. They're not coming back for number four, at least as it stands right now, unless number three is a huge hit out of the park, uh, and they completely nail it. I doubt we're going to see Andrew Garfield back again after Amazing Spider-Man 3. Mark Webb's going to be moving on as well. Um, but, I mean, like I said, I, I can see Amazing Spider-Man, or um, Sinister Six coming out next, and then Amazing Spider-Man 3, then Venom coming out after Amazing Spider-Man 3, and then somewhere down the line we'll get Amazing Spider-Man 4, most likely with a recast Peter Parker. But if we get more information about this topic, I will definitely update you guys on here. All right, and our next topic that we have to talk about here, more information has come out about the upcoming Jurassic Park sequel, Jurassic World. Um, there was actually, and I'll, I'll just I'll bring this up here, um, there was a leaked brochure that came out um, from what people will actually get on the island. And uh, a couple of things that it talks about, actually one of them, I don't know if this is actually from the park or if it's just an ad on it, but one of them actually lists a majority of the dinosaurs that people will see on their tour, and most likely these are some of the dinosaurs that we will see. Um, so they are the 
Ankylosaurus, which we saw, I believe that's the one that has the giant stone on the end of its tail, um, which I think we saw in either number two or number three, just very briefly. The Apatosaurus, which is kind of like a uh, Brachiosaur. Uh, Baryonyx, which this is interesting to me because Baryonyx and, where is it here, the Suchomimus. These are two very large predatory dinosaurs that were mentioned in Jurassic Park 3 when they were trying to figure out when they heard the roar of what ended up becoming the Spinosaur, what a lot of people thought that this dinosaur was. And they go, um, uh, you know, uh, Suchomimus, you know, we've got the snout. Uh, and then they say, no, and you know, it's, uh, it sounds too small or something like that. And then they go, Baryonyx. So these are two dinosaurs that are going to be the same size roughly as the T-Rex. Um, maybe not as predatory. Uh, we still don't know anything about how these dinosaurs are going to behave, if we're going to see them at all. This is just a list of all these, but they got, uh, they have another flying dinosaur called the um, Dimorph Dimorphodon, um, the Edmontosaurus, which looks like it's another plant eater. We got the Gallimimus back, and there's actually a, uh, a whole exhibit where people essentially get to recreate that scene from the original Jurassic Park, but in a safari-like um, environment. They're in protective vehicles and, and all these things, and they get to actually go along with the stampeding Gallimimus, which is actually kind of cool. The Mosasaurus, though, is the one that I'm really intrigued about, because there's even, on one of the other pages as well, there's a description where you will actually get, people get to go and watch this aquatic dinosaur uh, feed, so there's actually going to be an aquatic dinosaur sequence in the movie. Um, whether or not that's just part of the overall park and tour, or if it's actually part of when everything all goes to hell, we still don't know. Then we got the Pteranodon, obviously the Stegosaurus, Suchomimus as previously mentioned, Triceratops, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, one big thing on here as well, and I think this is meant to be uh, both intentional and also for part of the tour, the unknown dinosaur that we're going to be getting, the 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 hodgepodge dinosaur, the, the genetically created dinosaur, is not listed on here. At least if it is, it's uh, it could be like the Microceratus. Uh, I don't know. That sounds very small, just in the name. Um, but we still don't have an idea of what that thing's going to look like. That uh, that picture that I talked about a couple of weeks ago actually ended up being false. Uh, that was not the actual photograph of what the new dinosaur is going to look like. But if we go to the next slide here, this is uh, this is part of the open brochure and it's going to talk about all the different aspects of the park. So we have the Gentle Giants Petting Zoo where you can go and see all your herbiv all the herbivores like Triceratops and and uh, and a couple of the others all up close. Then we have the T-Rex Kingdom which is kind of self-explanatory. It's going to be very similar to what we saw in the first movie. The Mosasaurus Feeding Show which is going to be kind of like a SeaWorld type attraction um, where there's it's a big auditorium, there's there's going to be a big lagoon that it's going to be in, people are going to be able to go underwater, um, not swimming obviously, but they're going to be in these protective uh, viewing areas where they can watch this thing swim underwater. Uh, there's also the Creation Lab, which we saw in the first Jurassic Park, the Jungle Trek, which is what I told you about, where you can actually safari ride through the Gallimimus Valley, run with herds and see the, ap uh, the Apatosaurus eat from the tops of trees. Uh, the aviary, we're going to get another sequence with the flying dinosaurs, <clears throat> excuse me, with the, the pteranodons and, and, and stuff like that. Then on the other side, we have bamboo forest, where you actually get to travel into a prehistoric jungle where they've revived forms of flora and fauna that have been lost in, in modern Earth. Um, it's a self-paced trial, so it's, it's going to be uh, basically people just walk through it. I think some of the movie is actually going to take place in there uh, when all, all hell breaks loose. Interesting enough, though, they have a golf course on this island. Um, I wonder if that's going to be incorporated. It's probably just going to be one shot on the golf course, um, which I think would be pretty cool. You know, you hit the drive and then uh, blurred out in the background is going to be like an Apatosaurus or something like that. I think that would be cool. The one that I'm really intrigued about, and I hope they use this in the movie after things all go to hell is the gyrosphere uh, which is it's roll your way through an amazing interactive ride suitable for older children as well as adults on-site instructional video uh, um, prior to takeoff with comedian slash video host Jimmy Fallon so that's kind of cool but the gyrosphere is basically this big giant ball that people can get in they can stand in uh, and, it, and it can roll around like the the where they're standing will stay flat and they can roll around and they can interact with with all the areas. I think that would be a really cool action sequence that we may end up seeing in the film. Uh, and then we have the underwater observatory, which I told you about with the Mosasaurus, uh, where people can actually watch it. 
and then the Cretaceous Cruise. You can paddle along with the dinosaurs, but you must be fit enough to navigate your way down a river or to see uh, over a hundred species of prehistoric life. That to me sounds like it's almost ripped right out of the first book because there was a a water sequence uh, in the book, which was actually in the original video game, which was uh, I played for Sega Genesis. And uh, essentially the T-Rex was attacking Alan Grant and the kids as they were trying to paddle their way down this river. Uh, they kind of used that in Jurassic Park 3. Um, but in, in the book and in the video game, it is a little bit different. And that to me seems like it could be a really intriguing uh, sequence in the movie. But we still don't know if this is just going to be for show or if any of these segments are actually legitimate. But then we also get a full-fledged map of the park. Now, it's, it's kind of low resolution, so we can't read exactly what a lot of these sections are. But as you can tell from the map, based on what we were shown in the original Jurassic Park, this park has grown. Um, because the, the park, for the most part, did not have as many cleared areas as this does. And just looking at this map, I mean, we've got the main lagoon in the middle, which is brand new, and, and the new... Uh, uh, the new visitor center as well, which looks really, really cool. Um, from what Colin Trevorrow has said, there's going to be elements of the original movie in this film. And I don't mean just thematic. I mean, there's actually going to be structures that were that they're going to interact with. And I'm assuming that's when they get off the beaten path and they go into certain areas. I think that's where we're going to get the raptors, because as you noticed, uh, the raptors were not shown in the list of dinosaurs that were in there. But there is an animatronic photograph, or <clears throat> there's a photograph of an animatronic uh, Velociraptor that was leaked uh, with a muzzle on it and um, and so that leaves a lot of people to believe that the, the Raptors are going to be in it and if they are I think that's going to be in one of these sections that was from the original movie um, which I think would be really cool it's touching back on it because we know this film takes place within that world this is not a reboot of sorts it's a continuation of the already existing storyline but um, but yeah I mean like that this is something as far as I'm aware we're not going to be getting anything at comic-con when it comes to Jurassic World. As far as I'm aware, I haven't heard anything yet, but not all the panels have released all their information. Um, so we may end up getting something from it. We still don't know. Um, but Comic-Con's just a little over a week. It's like not even a week and a half away, which is, damn. That means next week, this time tomorrow, uh, a week from tomorrow, I'll be in Los Angeles, which would be pretty cool. I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, if we get more information about Jurassic World on here, especially at Comic-Con, I'll definitely be updating you guys on here. And the next topic that we have to talk about here, J.J. Uh, Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy are both vehemently, vehemently trying to get Star Wars Episode 7 pushed to May 4th, 2016. Not only is that May the 4th be with you, it's the perfect day to release a Star Wars movie, but a lot of things have happened with Star Wars to try to push it, and Bob Eager, who is the president C or the CEO of Disney, uh, has come out and said, no, we told our shareholders December 2015 would be the latest they'd see this movie. It's going to be out in December 2015. Now, the, the one of the main reasons that he is so adamant about it being on there is because he is going to be retiring in 2016, um, and part of Bob Eager's tenure as the head of C, uh, the head of Disney is he bought Marvel, like he, under his tenure. They bought Lucasfilm under his tenure. Um, the, you know, they've been able to spearhead, uh, and, and they got John Lasseter took over as head of both Disney Animation and Pixar. So I mean, under his leadership that Disney has really become a huge company. They've also had their fair share of flops with both John Carter and Lone, uh, Lone Ranger. But the fact remains, and, and J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy apparently, and this is unconfirmed, they haven't come out and officially stated this, we do know that they are expected to take a two-week hiatus in filming. Um, we don't know when that's expected to be, it's most likely going to be within the next few weeks, um, but apparently J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy are both using this uh, forced hiatus due to Harrison Ford's injury to get the film pushed. Uh, but see, uh, but Bob Eager is not willing to look at uh, at delaying the film. If they end up succeeding and getting Star, uh, Star Wars pushed to May 2016, especially on that release date, and if the other two projects don't move, we will have Star Wars Episode Seven. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice and Captain America 3 all opening up on the same weekend. Now, first off, Star Wars and Captain America 3 would not open together. They're from the same company. Disney owns them both. They would not do that. It's stupid. They're just going to be taking money out of themselves. They're not going to do that. Um, the 
next Pirates of the Caribbean movie is slated to open in 2016. I think it's July, but they've had a track record of any time in the summer. They could bump it to May. Um, but also they have the uh, the next Alice in Wonderland, um, Through the Looking Glass is what it's called, which is the sequel to the Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland film. Um, Batman v Superman, long rumor to be moving again. Um, Captain America, I'd be shocked if they didn't move it to the first week of April and mimic the success that they got with Captain America Winter Soldier having no real competition really at that point, giving it a few weeks to run uh, its course and then having something like Batman v Superman come out. Because a lot of people have been saying Batman v Superman are looking to move a week earlier. That's not going to do a lot. That's going to get them a good opening weekend and that's about it. But you're going to want a movie like Batman v Superman or Captain America 3 or even Star Wars. You're going to want to have that have legs and you're going to want to give it at least another week. So you're going to want to have it be released and then the next week there may be a comedy or an animated film that comes out have it be complete counter programming not have it really have anything to do with the thematic elements of that film so that it's juxtaposed people will want to go and see something that's different um, when it comes to big properties like that they wouldn't be affected as much as most other properties would but they would all each individually be affected by it and it wouldn't there would be a hindrance to them they wouldn't do it um, but there's a photograph which I actually found with Harrison Ford actually using this new um, type of crutch called an eye walk uh, and it's a hands-free crutch. It, it allows him basically, he just, as you can see in the photo, he just puts his knee down, straps his knee into this device, um, and he's able to walk freely. His leg kind of sticks out the back, but he's able to walk normally. And the reason being, I read up on this a little bit, is because when, when people use crutches, they don't use their legs at all. They don't put any weight down them, on them at all. And that causes muscle atrophy. And this prevents the muscle atrophy from happening, so the recovery once he actually starts doing his physiotherapy, once the cast comes off and he's able to actually start working uh, and, and, and doing physio on it, it's not going to take as long because he's, he's going to still have built up the muscles in the top of his leg. He's still going to have kept that up to date. Um, and so that also means that it, they said that he's probably going to be out for about a month. So I'm assuming they got about a week and a half left of filming, maybe two weeks left of filming, and they're going to take their hiatus. And then two weeks later, they're going to come back and they're going to start shooting all the Harrison Ford scenes. What they could have also done, because a lot of these sets are being built and they're going to last throughout the majority of the production. They could have filmed, and I know they said they weren't using a body double uh, and then replacing him using CGI. But they could have, in certain scenes, they could have filmed all of the other shots. They could have filmed, with the exception of the wide shots and the close-ups of Harrison Ford, they could have filmed all of the close-ups of any of the actors. Uh, even wide shots on certain actors as well. Um, you know, a second unit, they could have shot a lot of that as well. So there's a lot of stuff they could have reshuffled and done. Um, Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams both adamantly said that we are not shooting uh, a body double and then digitally replacing Harrison Ford's face on him. They were not going to do that. They were going to wait. And I think that the reason that they were going to do that and they weren't entertaining the idea of using a body double was because they could use this to try to push the release date, give J.J. Abrams more time to complete the film because that's what he wants. Uh, but it, it looks like that's not going to be happening. It looks as though we are going to be getting the film in December 2015 as much as J.J. Abrams doesn't want to. A lot of speculation has it that this is the sole reason why J.J. Abrams is not coming back to direct episode 8. He may end up coming back to do episode 9, especially if um, with... Um, um, I am drawing a blank on who is directing... Uh, oh, Lo Looper Director. Looper Director. Why can't I think of his name? The guy who directed Looper, um, who is doing number eight, uh, Ryan Johnson. If Ryan Johnson's treatment for episode eight and episode nine come out fairly quick, because episode nine is not scheduled to come out until 2019. Um, and if J.J. Abrams gets on board in, let's say, the end of 2015 when he's wrapping up episode seven, and he sees the treatment for episode nine, he goes to Disney and says, listen, if I start, like, it." If this is going to happen and I'm going to do this, we're going to start right now. We're going to do it my way. He may have the ability to say that, depending on how well of a success that Episode 7 is. Uh, it's going to be huge, but it could be even bigger if it's if it's received very well. Um, he could potentially come back for number 9, but I don't think so. I think he's going to be godfathering this project. I think he's going to be the executive producer of all the films, and he's going to be spearheading the, the, the direction that the universe is going to go in um, with giving... Little bits of input here and there, but for the most part, he's just going to be in a in a producerial role, 
Um, he will not be directing another Star Wars film. As far as I'm aware, and as far, I think, as, as everything else has already come up, I don't think we're going to see him do another Star Wars movie again. Um, but if we get more information about Star Wars or anything related to Star Wars, I will definitely update you guys on here. And our final topic that we have to talk about today is I'm really stretching when I look at this topic. Um, this is one, this is not on any news reports, this is just something that when I saw it and, and when I read the one line in this article, it, it just sparked this idea. Warner Brothers did not list Batman v Superman as part of their lineup. They didn't list any DC properties whatsoever. But with Man of Steel, Legendary was one of the companies that helped finance that film. From what I've heard, Legendary is doing Batman v Superman. Legendary Pictures has not released and are declining to release their lineup for Comic-Con. My speculation, Legendary's panel is where they are going to unveil the DC lineup. Wishful thinking, granted, but I am assuming that that is what's going to happen. It allows them to still keep the secret that these projects are not coming. Still, and, and I talked about this on the other show. The fact that Comic-Con, San Diego International Comic-Con, now has at least two films that are comic book films that are not coming. Yet we're getting Let's Be Cops. We're getting um, uh, The Hobbit, even though The Hobbit's a book, but it's still not a comic book. Um, you know... That's just shocking to me. It, it makes no sense. You would think that superhero films and comic book films would have precedence over any other project. Um, the fact is, Warner Brothers is also bringing Jupiter Ascending, which to me is very odd, because um, they just chose to delay that film. That film was, was supposed to come out um, this upcoming weekend, um, and, and they delayed it, and now it's going to be one of their main projects in their, their panel. Why would you delay it, especially putting it in a February release, if you if you had hope with the film? You had a prime summer lo uh, time slot. If you really had a lot of faith in this film, and you had to delay it due to the special effects not being finished, you would then push it to sometime next summer. I mean, there, there's no other option out there if you have faith in it, or I mean, at least March. But a dump month of February means you don't have a lot of hope in it. Why are you bringing it to Comic-Con then? Well, like, I, it doesn't make any sense. Unless you now have this the, this reinstalled love for this project, I don't get it. I don't understand their motivations for doing this. Um, especially when it's so close to the release. If they had done it back in, like, March, and said, you know what, Jupiter Ascending, is, it, it, we're, we can already tell now, it's not going to make its release date, the, the special effects are not going to be done, the fine-tuning of the editing is not going to be done, we're going to delay it until November. November's a great time to release it as well. Um, but no, they decided to wait until February, which to me is a stupid decision. There was only, there was the Lego movie that came out, which that one made sense. A, it was animated, you can release animated films whenever you want. Um, it, that's not going to change on it. It's not considered a dump, uh, uh, a dump category for animation, just for live action. Look at I Frankenstein. By the, uh, by the way, full disclosure, I thought I am for and uh, yeah, I thought I Frankenstein was a hell of a lot of fun. It is a terrible, terrible, terrible movie, but it is a hell of a lot of fun, and I really did enjoy it for what it was. Uh, but it still is a bad movie. But that's why you release movies around that time. Same with, um, oh no, that came out in October. I was going to say The Three Musketeers. That was, oh my god, that was a bad film. But Pompeii, again, horrible film, you know, released in February. It d just doesn't make any sense. Um, but I'm pretty sure that Legendary's panel, because the, the only reason I'm thinking this as well is because they've, just, they've declined to announce what they're showing. And that to me means they're keeping it pretty close to the vest. And if they are, if they are partnered and, and, and doing anything of that sort with, um, with the DC films, then that's where they're going to unveil it. I know that, that Legendary is now a part of Universal, which has nothing to do with Warner Brothers. But they are still doing other projects. Legendary is going to be doing uh, Pacific Rim 2. 
Um, if Godzilla 2 goes ahead, they're, which we already know it is, they're going to be doing Godzilla 2. So they, they do still have partnerships with Warner Brothers with already existing franchises, but their new deal is with Universal. But that leads me to believe that that's what's going to happen. It doesn't make sense for all these rumors to come out about DC and all these casting announcements and, and official photos to come out about the project and then not have a panel at the largest convention in the world for film. It doesn't make sense. But anyway, if we do get it, that'll be amazing. And I will definitely report it on here. By the way, um, starting next week, um, I most likely will not have an episode on Monday. But if I do, it'll be a very short one. Uh, I will just be getting everything ready uh, to leave for Tuesday. I will hopefully start the videos up on Wednesday. And I'm going to try to do... Uh, it'll either be Wednesday or Thursday that I do the video, the first one. And there will be four videos in a row. And it'll be, most likely it'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There'll be four videos in a row about the recap of what we've seen at Comic-Con. Uh, and then final, uh, following that, there will not be an episode on Monday. Uh, I will be coming back the following Wednesday. So, um, the 28th, I will not have an episode, but the 30th, I will. Um... So just be on the lookout for that, and and just be mindful of that. There will not be there there won't be a Wednesday episode most likely next week, but there will be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'm going to make up for that, uh, and then there will not be a Monday episode on the 28th. There will be one on the 30th, but just not the 28th. So I'm just letting you guys all know about that. Uh, I'm very excited about hearing all the stuff about Comic Con. I'm trying to get tickets to uh, a couple of different shows in uh, in Los Angeles. I was unable to get Jimmy Kimmel, uh, which was kind of unfortunate, but I already got to go to Jimmy Kimmel a couple of years ago, which was kind of cool. Um, but there are a couple other attractions and stuff like that that I'm going to try to get to. And I'm going to be talking about what... Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of studio tours and, and going about all the behind the scenes of Hollywood and, and all that kind of stuff. So watch out for videos about that. But the majority of the videos are going to be about the events of Comic-Con and what's happening with that. So make sure to keep your, look out, or your eye out for that. Um, and so, yeah, if we get more information about what Legendary's panel is actually going to be at Comic-Con, I will definitely update you guys on here. But as far as I'm concerned, it's going to be, majority of it's going to be DC-oriented, because I think Warner Brothers is going to use that as an outlet. Um, but again, that's just me speculating. Um, more information will probably come up before Comic-Con, but when that actually hits, I'll definitely update you guys on here. All right, well, that'll about do it for us here on Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. Don't forget to click subscribe in the bottom corner. You can get updates whenever we post a new video. You can follow me on Twitter at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, for all of your updates on movie information. You can find us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash movie news with Nicholson, where you can start a discussion or just ask a general question, which will be answered on every Friday episode. And then you can also find us on our website at movienewswithnicholson.ca. And on there, there's a contact section where you can post a, uh, or submit a question, and it'll be answered like the Facebook questions on every Friday episode along with a major review. So, without any further ado, this has been Nicholson. You guys have been great, and you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.